it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. I have realized on my channel I have not yet done a reflection or a mirror image kind of card so that is what I am going to do today. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this. In fact there are a few but I'm going to use this little stamp set here today but you could use anything like flower images, anything that you want to do. You could use hearts or shapes, anything you want to mirror image or create a reflection of you can use the same tools. Now this one here is kind of the purpose built option if you will. So this is the mirror stamping plate from Stampendous and this is the one I pretty much mainly use. There are lots of other techniques that you can also do with this that I use it for but I'm going to show you another technique first off that you can use and you probably already have handy without having to buy another product. So I, for my project today, need to use a permanent ink and there are several options. You can use the Memento inks, the Archival inks or the Versafine inks. There are lots of different inks that you can use that become permanent. If you have any other inks that aren't permanent, then I would suggest adding some clear embossing powder and heat setting that so that it is permanent that way. Now here is a brayer. This is a stock standard brayer, a no-name brayer, and I'm going to slowly roll over the image after I have inked it up in my Versafine. So you can see that the image has now been transferred onto my brayer. So there are a couple of different ways here, depending on if you're going for a mirror image or a reflection image. Then I just kind of aim the barrel of the roller in the right place and then pop it down onto my page. Now, if you want a reflection, obviously you just turn the image upside down and then ink up the stamp and stamp it down as normal. So that creates a reflection and often the mirror image or the reflections are not quite as crisp and not quite as bright. And that's kind of just stock standard. And so far I haven't found an option that doesn't really do that. So you can see here I'm inking up the stamp, roll my brayer over it just one time and then roll my brayer down onto my paper. This is if you want to create a mirror image. So you just put it down normally and then stamp beside it and that would be your mirror image. So if you want the reflection, you turn your piece of paper upside down and if you want the mirror, you just stamp it beside it. So anyway, I am going to use the stamping plate. So I am going to pop my little cow here right pretty much in the center. Now I have switched over here and for this one I'm going to be using some memento ink but honestly there, as I said there are lots of different inks out there and if you can't make it permanent then pop on the clear embossing powder. Now to get my reflected image I am just going to stamp it down onto the mirror stamping plate then turn it kind of upside down then line it up and then once I have it where I want it to go which is just underneath the original cow I'm just going to kind of press down it's sort of hard but not too hard you don't want to kind of squish the ink out anywhere um, and then I have my image ready to go. Now of course I am going to make sure this is thoroughly dry before I add anything on top of it and I also am going to build a scene around this little cow. And for this, I'm going to be using some Distress Oxide inks. So Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn will become the ground. And I'm just popping these down onto some acrylic blocks. But um, if you could use a nonstick mat would work too. Then some Salty Ocean and Tumbled Glass will become the water or the pond that the cow is standing by. And I promise you before we begin <laughs> that this is as good as my artistic skills get. There is not much here to go on. <laughs> I do not claim to be an artist. This is not my forte and honestly I don't enjoy this kind of thing. It's really just a means to an end for me. I could have uh, propped this up and kind of done it all on die cuts and things like that. That would have been fun too. But uh, this is very, very basic and in the end I kind of think it looks okay. So I am adding a little bit of both the greens down there and then kind of adding in some little specks of grass and as I said this will become the edge of the pond or the water and again not realistic at all, very cartoonish and that goes along with the kind of picture, the stamp that I chose for this set and that helps me out a lot. <laughs> so now I'm going to add some tumbled glass and this will become the water part of it. I'm not too worried about doing the edges and things here because I will be die cutting out of this so you can see that I'm kind of not really worrying about going right uh, to the outside and making sure everything is perfect up there but I'm just turning this around for ease of colouring. 
And then once I have done most of the tumbled glass, I'm going to add just a few little sort of waves or water movements uh, with the slightly darker color. And that way it's unmistakably water, hopefully. And then for the sky, all I end up doing, I could have added um, some ink blending up there. But really, I just took a little bit of the tumble glass and kind of made little puddles of it up there. And that kind of looks like the clouds itself. Again, no real skill here, just popping it down. And I know that it's a little bit hard to see uh, with my lighting. But I'm filming most of these at night time. I generally film after the kids go to bed and things. And pretty much the same for all of the editing and voiceovers and things uh, that come along with creating these videos. Now I could have chosen to colour the cow here, the spots in, with um, oxide inks as well. I actually ended up using a little zig marker to do the pink flower. And then I am just colouring these in with a pen. Whatever is easiest for you. It doesn't matter what you find easiest. Just do what works for you. And nobody will know the difference when they receive this card about what mediums you ended up using. I am going to use a glaze pen. This is just a black glaze pen. And with this, I am just going to do her hooves and the end of her tail um, and a little bit in the middle of her eyes as well, but not too much. Now here you can kind of see that the reflected image is a little bit less bright uh, than the one that I originally stamped. So for this, I am going to just use a little bit of hickory smoke ink. And actually, I think I end up putting on a little bit of black soot just here because the color wasn't quite dark enough for the reflection. But you can go to town with how much effort you want to put into the reflection or how dark or how light you want it to be. It's up to you. I quite like now that I am editing it where it was the lighter gray, but it doesn't matter. And again, when you get the card, I don't think that your focus is on that. So I wasn't too worried at all how this turned out. I'm adding a little bit of that same pink on the inside of the ears. And then I have a couple of pieces of patterned paper here to start finishing off my card. Now the kind of gingham pattern in the back there is from this paper pack. And I will link everything that I can down below, all of the supplies that are still available. If they are not available or they're out of stock, I really do apologize. I know that's frustrating. Um, and then the green one behind it, the green piece of paper, is just a random piece that I had in my stash. So uh, that's not very helpful, but I know that you guys will have a whole lot of pattern paper and colored paper in your stash and if not you're able to create some it would be just fine and work really well then i'm taking an oval die and i'm going to die cut out that seam i have taken one size larger in the oval dies and i'm going to cut it out of our little gingham pattern and then that way it just provides a little bit of contrast and kind of a really nice border between the green and the image and again, you don't have to do that and it doesn't have to be out of pattern paper. Even black paper would look really nice as well. I was just going for something just a tiny bit different and not quite so harsh. Um, but anyway, my image is kind of coming together here and I'm planning it all out in my head. I'm going to pop this down onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. So I cut my green piece down to be four by five and a quarter. I am gluing it down with a little bit of liquid glue. The glue is the uh, multi-medium in the matte finish from Ranger. And I pop it into those little glue bottles. If you search how to fill a glue bottle on YouTube, my video will pop up. And that is how I fill those little bottles. Then I am taking the sentiment from the same stamp set. And I have also taken a couple of little cloud dies from my stash and cut those out. And this is where I'm going to pop the sentiment. So I'm just going to ink it up and stamp it out in some Versafine Onyx Black Ink, which is a great pigment ink, which is really good for stamping fine details. Then again, I will use some liquid glue to pop my image down onto my frame. And then if I had foam tape in my stash, I would use it. <laughs> but I am completely and utterly out of foam tape. So I'm going to use a whole lot of little foam squares, but just use what you have. And it's really important to use up what we have in our stash as well. So I'm trying to live by that and make sure that I use up everything before I go and buy something new. So I have popped that down onto my card base and then I'm going to pop up one side of my little sentiment and then add a little bit of liquid glue so that it sits nice and even up here on my image. And then I'm going to add just another little couple of uh, die cut clouds as well just so that one doesn't look quite so out of place up there. 
And that is pretty much my card for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing a couple of different ways that you can create the mirror or reflection image in your card making. I know some other people just stamp it down onto acetate and onto different um, sort of rubber mats and things. So as I said, there are lots of different ways, but this was just a couple of them today. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks, bye.